So let's proceed with problem number six. As you can imagine, what we're going to do is start by saying dy equals x ln x dx. And let's take the antiderivative of each side. And I'm left with x ln x dx, the integral of that. Okay, so if I'm going to follow suit with tabular integration, I'm going to say, let's let the polynomial function x be f of x. Its derivative is 1. Its derivative is 0. So ln x must be g of x, and I'm going to need its antiderivative. Wait a minute. I don't know the antiderivative of ln x. I only know the derivative of ln x. Huh. Okay, well, that's not working. Why don't I try it the other way around? Maybe, maybe that was just the wrong idea. Maybe in this one, I, I, I need to reverse the order. So let me make ln x the f of x part that I'll do the derivatives for, and x be the g of x part I'll do antiderivatives for. So the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. The derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative 1x to the negative 2, which of course is negative 1 over x squared. The derivative of that is positive 2x to the negative 3, which is 2 over x cubed. Okay, I'm seeing a problem because if I continue to go on this left-hand side, my next derivative will be some number over x to the 4th, and the derivative over that will be some other number over x to the 5th, that's not going to dissolve to zero. And it's not that it's a problem to do the antiderivatives over here. So the, the problem isn't the antiderivative side. The problem is the derivative side, because I could keep going infinitely on both columns, but I'm never going to get what I need. So where does that leave us? It leaves us needing a new method. So here's what I need you to understand. Tabular integration is a really, really cool method that's a specific case of integration by parts. Integration by parts is the more general way to handle these crazy integrals. The good news for you is that most every problem that you need to do on the AB exam, you can use the tabular method. Woohoo! But I want you to know what happens when the tabular method won't work to help you transition into out or calculus too successfully. And I also want you to kind of understand where tabular came from, how they, how they saw a pattern in integration by parts and realized that that could be done more quickly with um, the process called tabular. Now, to understand integration by parts, you need to understand that it stems from the product rule for differentiation. So integration by parts is basically the product rule for integration. So here's what we need to know. If you think of, in this case, u and v are both functions of x, and I said, okay, take the derivative of u times v. That's the same as taking u times the derivative of the second function plus v times the derivative of the first function. And what we get down to, instead of me using this Leibniz notation, and instead of me using the prime notation, you're used to me using the VDU UDV notation um, with the very droopy underpants just because it's a cool little memory trick. So I'm going to take the very droopy underpants rule, which is right here, and I'm going to rearrange it. So I want to isolate UDV. To do that, I subtract v to u to the uv prime side. So that's what I have here. Now my thinking is I can integrate both sides of the problem. And notice that I'm taking some liberties, my where else I need dvs or dxs or du's. I'm not being real, real um, formal with my notation. So give me a little leeway here for this to make sense. So if I want to integrate u dv, which is what my goal is going to be, then I integrate uv prime and I integrate v du. I'm going to integrate them separately. 
Well, do you understand that here I'm saying I want to do the antiderivative of a derivative? Well, since those are inverse operations, essentially, the antiderivative of the derivative of uv is just uv. Now, the hope is that when you break it into uv minus the integral of v du, the hope is that the integral of v du is very easy to manage, whereas the integral of u dv was not. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to go back to the step on this one where I had dy, d, or dy equals x ln x dx. This is the same example I started a minute ago. So I know that y equals the antiderivative of x ln x. I know that tabular won't work, so what I need to do is try integration by parts. With integration by parts, you call one part u and one part dv. So I'm just going to haul off and say, let's let u equal the first thing I come to, x. Then let me call the dv part the rest of it, so ln x dx. So on the u side, I need you to come up with du which you're used to doing, so that's just 1 dx. On the dv side, I need you to do the antiderivative and come up with just v. Okay, the problem here again is I still don't know what the um, antiderivative of ln x is. So this isn't working. Now, you may say, Ms. Porter, why are you showing us what won't work? Because I want you to be okay that it's a natural process. Sometimes you get lucky and you pick the right thing first, and sometimes you don't. And if you're not lucky the first time, don't give up. It's just part of the way you learn to get better at this, and you will become more efficient and more advanced, more accurate at choosing your U and your DV right the first time. Well, I need to switch. Let me call U then LNX. And dv is the rest of it. So dv is the x dx. Well, on the u side, I need to find du. I'm used to that. So that's just 1 over x dx. On the dv side, I need to find v. Well, I can do the antiderivative of x. That's 1 half x squared. Okay, so the question is, is this helping us any? Let's just see. Now, remember... The rule for doing the antiderivative of u dv is to say uv minus v du, okay? So how does that translate into the problem that we're doing? Well, uv, according to the green, uv is ln x times 1 half x squared. That would be more re easily written as 1 half x squared ln x minus the antiderivative of v, v is 1 half x squared, du. So d, um, du I've got is 1 over x dx here in green. Now, let me clean up a little bit. Now, the um, outside, the 1 half x squared ln x, just recopy that. You don't do anything with it. I'm going to pull the 1 half out of the integral. Do you see that the x squared times the 1 over x is just x dx? So remember, the goal of integration by parts is for the new integral you create to be easier to manage than the original integral problem. And it is. Because when I ask you to integrate this x, you're just going to say, no biggie, squiggy, it's 1 half x squared, plus c. Don't forget the ever-important plus c. And then you get 1 half x squared ln x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. And there's your, um, there's your antiderivative. That is, if I put y in front of it, there is my general solution to the original differential equation problem. Now, can you check your answer? Yes, you can. And I'm not going to do it every time. I'm going to do it here, though. So I'm going to check an orange. 
So the way that I can check this solution is to simply um, differentiate it. So when I differentiate this first part, well, I'll even start from the beginning. When I differentiate this, I get dy dx. When I differentiate this squiggly underlined part, I have to use product rule. So it's v du, 1 half x squared's derivative is just going to be 1x, plus u, which is 1 half x squared, dv, the derivative of L and x is 1 over x. When I um, differentiate the double squiggly part, I just get minus 2 fourths or minus 1 half x. And when I differentiate the c value, that's just a, a constant term, so its derivative is 0. So this gives me x, L, and x. And look, on this term I get 1 half x minus 1 half x, and those cancel each other. So I'm just left with dy dx equals x, L, and x, which was the original problem. Therefore, my integration by parts was a correct integration method. Let's do one more. Now, this problem was actually, if I'm remembering correctly, one of the problems on the tabular side, and you may have avoided doing it. Let's suppose that we just, you don't realize it can be done with tabular, so let's do it with integration by parts. So I'm going to start out again and say, um, let's let u equal x. Therefore, dv needs to be the rest of it. So secant squared x dx. So I need a du, which is easy. That's just 1 dx. I need a v, so I'm going to integrate this. Now on this one, the antiderivative of secant squared x is tangent x because the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Okay. Now, I'll know for sure if this is working if what I set up actually can be integrated. So, I know that the rule is that the integral of u dv equals uv, which is x tangent x, minus the antiderivative of v du, v du. Wow. Okay, so I feel like that I ought to be able to integrate tangent x, but can you think of a trig function that when you take its derivative, you get tangent? Nope, I don't think there is one. Is there something else we can do? Why, yes. We can do trig identities and then use regular u substitution. So if I'm going to use regular u substitution, what I want to do is say for this part, let's let u equal cosine x, then du is going to equal negative sine dx, which means I'm going to rewrite this, this integral as 1 over u, and then the sine x dx part, I'm going to replace that. But do you see that's going to be negative du? So I'm going to say, no, 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 I'm just going to go ahead and do that here and make it negative du. Hmm. Okay, so where am I in the problem? And let me drop x tan x down here because I don't want to lose track of my parts and pieces. Well, that would give me x tangent x minus, now I know... You know what I need to do, because I've got minus a negative. So if it's minus negative all of this, I better change this to plus before I mess my sign up, shouldn't I? So I know the antiderivative of 1 over u is ln of u. And I hope you don't mind me going ahead and putting u back in as cosine x. And of course, I know that should be in absolute values. But there's my answer, and if you wanted to go and actually do the derivative to check that, you could.